Okay, good afternoon. Today is May 28, 2020 at 4 p.m. This is a meeting of the Rockland Saw Commission via remote teleconference, recorded for public play play playback on WRPS, your local cable access TV, www.wrpsrockland.com. With that, if we have a busy, busy agenda today, so let's try to stick with the agenda items if we may, so we can get through this. And with the first agenda item is approval of the previous meetings. We have to apologize through no fault of anybody. Our last meeting was in February. So we have we those meetings for January and February were not, the minutes were not approved. So everyone's had the opportunity, I hope, to review the minutes from January and February 2020. And if everybody's in current, would someone make a motion? I'll okay. make a motion that we accept the minutes from January and February 2020. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 If I may, if I may for a minute. The part of business on the agenda today is proposed additional guidelines to the 2006 moratorium that was instituted back then. Chuck Keshin, the board member, uh, come, up with, come up with some suggestions for our review this evening. Sean, if I could for a minute, if I could for a minute, I invited um, uh, Kevin Olson from Right PS in, and rather than him tie him up for the whole thing of what we've got to do on the upgrade, you want to just let him go first, and then we can kick into the rest. Sure. So you want to you want to skip to yeah why don't number we six. To, um, why don't we skip to number six, the comprehensive study update? Um, for those you could who do me a favor had... and speak as loud as you could, please. I'm having a little bit of problem. Okay. Um, as you know, from our last meeting, we accepted the proposal from Wright PS to do a comprehensive engineering study of the facility um, out of the other, of all the bidders. They were the ones that stuck with it and the one we were the most comfortable with. Uh, what I wanted to do for Walter and Ron, uh, they did not have the opportunity to meet or participate in the, uh, in the selection. So I thought I'd have Kevin come in, introduce himself, uh, tell them what they're bringing to the table, how they foresee going through this, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, what had happened is that they gave us a bid, and as you know, um, we had allocated at a town meeting $100,000 uh, for this study. The study came in at one, let's use the number 125 to round things off. So John had written an addendum um, or an article to request an, uh, an additional 30,000 uh, from the town that's pending town meeting. Um, I had had contact with uh, Doug Lapp and uh, finance people about whether we could sign that contract. And they had some um, un discomfort with it because it did not meet the full amount. Uh, Kevin came up with some alternatives, but right now we're in, in limbo until that town meeting, which I guess they're gonna try to have, last I heard John, the 23rd? 23rd, that's what, yes, correct. All right, so with that, I guess, I'd like to introduce uh, Kevin Olson from Right Yes. Um, Kevin, now uh, you have Ron Savicki, Walter Simmons on, at the uh, with the bank robbery mask on, uh, who are the <laughs> other um, other commissioners. So with that, you got the floor. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, everybody, hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Well, yeah. So I am Kevin Olson. Um, as mentioned, I'm a senior project manager with Wright Pierce. Um, been been at this for a long time and uh, sorry for my unkempt hairdo here. I think I'm actually going to get to the barber on Monday. <laughs> but um, appreciate the uh, confidence that you guys have shown in us so far. I, you know, I, we realize that we haven't done anything for you yet, uh, but we are very excited about the opportunity and uh, appreciative that, you know, you guys are willing to uh, at least put up for a vote to try and get some additional funding. Um, I know Chuck, you and I spoke about making sure that there were some key items included in our scope and our fee. Um, you know, we don't have to bore you guys with details, but one of them in particular was a, a real good structural analysis, which we will do as part of our overall assessment of the treatment facility. 
Um, so you know, we have a, a really comprehensive scope. I think you guys put together a nice scope of services. We certainly went through that and uh, enhanced that where we thought you know we could improve it and provide more value to you guys in terms of you know giving it a good look. And I know that your operators looks like we have both Ed and Rick on um, have done a great job. Uh, along with Chuck to provide us information, you know, is through the process to ultimately get to the selection point. So um, we're really excited to uh, get started. Um, I know we also have laid out uh, a schedule for you. You know, we had laid out to get it done within seven months. Um, I know Chuck, you were very clear about, you know, let's nail down the schedule, but once we get it locked and loaded, let's stick to that, which we will do. Um, obviously, we're going to push that a little bit, but uh, it is what it is. I'm, I'm assuming if things go forward with the additional town meeting vote that you know, early start would be sometime in July, perhaps, Chuck? Well, uh, that's, what, that's what I'm hoping. But if I may, as far as um, the timetable for that final report, uh, I'm more interested in quality rather than expediting it. So, you know, whatever you are, I know you had said eight months. If it takes 10 months a year, all I want to do is make sure it's very thorough, very comprehensive, and yep. right to the point. Quality is more important than you know, getting it done or trying to rush it through. And if something changes, you know, we'll certainly work with you. So, um, but anyways, so the, you know, the, the good news would be that, you know, if you do get started in, in July, you know, sometime early next year, um, you'd have our thoughts on it and our recommendations you will at that point um you know we we'd have workshops al along the way with you but we'd sit down um and also involve suez as well to to see what we recommend obviously cost is going to end up becoming a significant discussion point um and we would have recommended costs as well which would include both capital um and o and m so we would do life cycle costs um, i don't want to bore you guys with a lot of details but you know as part of our interview um, we did get pretty deep into some of our early thinking in terms of, you know, what, you, you know, your options to get from a 0.2 milligram per liter for total phosphorus to a 0.1. Um, you know, you don't have the permit yet, but it seems fairly clear that you're going to need to get there. So is it, you know, how much can you do with a biological phosphorus removal versus, you know, biological and maybe some chem precip, you know, might very well need a tertiary system in there. So I'm not going to get into all the details, but the, you know, the, there's a, you know, a small handful of significant items. And I, I know Ed and Rick, you guys know everything, but um, headworks, you know, influent pumping headworks, that's a significant item. So, you know, screening, grit, there's a number of ways to do that. There's going to be a, a price tag with that. Tertiary phosphorus removal or, you know, some form of, form of phosphorus removal is going to be a big item. What are you going to do with digestion? Um, you know, you do want to spend some significant capital money to get it up to snuff. Um, you know, we're going to have to compare that against the O&M part of it. And I know Ed and Rick, we've talked quite a bit about that. So life cycle costing is going to be really important there. Um, what do you do with your, your solids processing system? Um, so there's a number of things. Structural, um, you know, how much, you know, structural rehab, how much structural work really does need to be done? Can we avoid doing some of that? Um, so uh, you, do ha you do have a fair amount of work to be done there. Um, I think the time is right um, to get it done. I, I think on the good news front, um, uh, to, you know, Ed and Rick's horn a little bit, they're doing a pretty darn good job from what we saw of operating that, but there's definitely some old aging uh, structures and systems there. Um, but, you know, the administrative building, you know, you've got a lot of good things there too. You know, that's in fabulous shape. It's not very old. So it, you really got isolated areas where you've got to do work. And in some areas you got to do a lot of work. So I, I can get deeper if you guys want, but I'm guessing you probably don't need me to. You guys have seen the scope, um, you know, in detail. So I can maybe pause there for a second, Chuck, and see if, you know, I know that we probably want to talk about a few other things also, but that was just kind of a quick uh, overview for me. No, I, I have a couple I want to I want to pop in. I guess the first one's going to Rick. Are you on? Yeah, I am. I can't hear him. Ed, is he on or? Yeah, he is. I, I see his name. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the things is we want to put four meters on the uh, headworks in March. Was that done? What was that now? Are you asking about the flow study? Inflow yeah, flow study. Put some to, to check on the inflow. Was that done? Yep. Yep, it's done. Yeah, we we completed that in April. I actually I sent along the report. Um, okay, so Ed, so what? Yeah, Kevin has actually. Can you hear me, Chuck? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, and that was also we put the findings in the uh, the last month's um, monthly operating report as well. 
Okay. So we, and I took them and I compared them against our flow. And I, I think we ended up around, I mean, it wasn't too bad um, overall throughout the whole testing period. I think we, we kind of landed at about 2% off. I forget what the exact numbers That's were, but it, it is in that report. Um, there were days where it was more and days where it was less, but I think overall, the whole month it was about two percent so it was it was a lot better than what we anticipated and that was that's, that's pretty good that's that's really good now kevin one of the well, key things that I, I need to emphasize on this study is whatever the recommendations come out of this it has to carry rockland to at least the next 30 years yep so when you're approaching this don't look at, uh, at now to the 10 years that it's complete you, you have to look down the road agreed uh, and one of the other things that i i I hope I think I believe I covered. I hope I did with you in the interview process. Was where can we look at? You know, we're limited to a flow flow rate. Uh, can we offload some of our processed water to the golf courses, reuse other avenues of of that? Yeah, that's something that we we put in there uh, in, to to look at. You know, what about effluent reuse? You know, whether it's the Rockland Country Club or the the Harmon Golf Course or even you know, Strawberry Valley, anywhere we can, that you see a market for it. it because like I said, the, the, the limiting factor is going to be French's strength. Yeah, exactly. And we know that. So, you know, and, and we laid out, you guys might recall, we laid out a four-step process. Step one is obviously to get the evaluation done. Step two, we recommend that, you know, you guys, the town of Rockland, consider uh, completing a comprehensive wastewater management plan, which you'd roll in all of this work that you're going to do initially, so it wouldn't be doubling up on it. But, you know, the, the real message I wanted to convey to you guys, and I, I know some of you are already aware of it, is you could position uh, yourself for uh, the state revolving loan, SRF revolving loan funding, instead of the standard 2%, since you have nutrients involved here, you can get some, or if it was a, just a complete nutrient project, which yours won't be, you can get down to 0%, which does make quite a big difference, obviously, on a, a fairly sizable project. Uh, and as part of the, the Comprehensive Wastewater Management Plan, or CWMP, uh, again, roll in the results of your treatment plant assessment, but you zoom out. And you look into, you know, we pull in some of the collection system work, the II work that you're doing with another consultant. We would look at your pump stations. To your point, Chuck, we would look at um, all of the unsewered areas. I know you guys have got quite a bit of the town sewered, but are there some other needs areas? Um, and then, you know, the real key item is your permit and your flow. You know, where could you offload some flow, maybe do some flow shedding, reuse? You know, do you do a groundwater discharge somewhere else within Rockland? You know, do you look at perhaps you know, teaming with neighbors, you know, do you work a little bit, you know, differently with, with Southfield and try and find a win-win there with that development. So uh, again, I'm probably getting a little bit too deep, Chuck, but we would certainly oh. pull that in. But step two would really get a little bit further outside of the confines of the treatment plant, okay. but it would, it would pay the dividends for you guys. Just Kevin, to, can we just, get back to the time frame? Yep. When, when the contract gets signed, when you'll yep. be able to start, obviously with the situation that we're in right now, the plant is actually in lockdown right now. Yep. So as far as the availability between Suez letting you on the property, of the town letting you on the property, and so we can come to some mutual understanding. Okay. Yeah, so- I, we, I know you're gonna need a lot of resources from Suez. Yeah, and well, they've been wonderful so far. And the good news is we're already up and running. We have so much information, you know, as right. part of the, the proposal process and even recently, um, you guys have sent along some more information. So the, the real, the, I think the real key point for us though, John, would be to get to get down there. You know, we get, kick it off officially, we fill whatever data gaps that we have, but then we bring all of our building disciplines down yeah. there um, to the site. So if, if I, I guess if you guys do get the additional 30,000, we sign a contract, you know, July 2nd, you know, early start would be sometime in July. I don't know, maybe the question is more for Ed or, or Rick, when when you could start to see people on site, you know, if we exactly. follow the appropriate guidelines, is July exactly. a possibility, guys? I think that's up to the town. Oh, it is. Okay, okay. It's actually town property. So. Well, that that's true. That's true. I think from Sue's perspective, I think July probably looks pretty good as well. That's so. great. Yeah, and, and frankly, it's going to be what it's going to be. Um, you know, we actually were with Mass Development today. We're doing some work at Devon's, um, and we had to go through a pump station there, and um, we had to follow their protocols there. But you know, we were with you know, Sean Munier, <laughs> Suez, and we had to follow their protocols as well. So it is case by case. So you know, we're ready whenever you guys are. 
uh, and we'll follow whatever protocols the town and Suez want us to follow. We actually have our own right peers protocols as well as we begin to open up our offices also. Oh, and we'll great. see that's we'll, we'll see when phase two and phase three happen, right? Governor Baker's got his four phase plan for us all, so. Yeah, so do we have to make a motion? No, no, I just, this was basically oh. a hi, how are you introducing Kevin? Oh, okay. Him, letting him know it's, it's really up to now the, uh, John, I guess the town meeting, whether that funding is approved or not approved. Yeah, so the sooner the better that we get started, the, the better off for everybody. Yep, nope. and yeah, we're excited and we're ready to go. So Good. it's- Kevin, like I said, uh, thank you very much for, for taking the time to talk with the guys. Yep, and if you have any other questions, you know, feel free to hit me now or you can follow up with me. You know, Chuck and I are pretty well connected. You can run the other questions through Chuck at any time. All right, nice to meet you, Kev. Thank uh, you. One other thing you, Kevin. before you yep. do go, what I'm doing is I'm, con I'm keeping a uh, database of our conversation, just so you know, to be on the record open. Uh, of our conversation emails, uh, what documents we send you. Okay. And that'll be uh, fully open for your review and you'll receive a copy of anything I have okay. as we go along. Thanks, Chuck. Well, good to see you all. Look forward to working with you. Okay, okay. Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. I'm gonna bye sign bye. out. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, we're back to the agenda, John. Okay. I'm sorry, we have to speak up, please. So, what, 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 are we going back now to? Well, we have to approve the minutes of the previous meeting, right? We didn't do that. Did you did that. Did we or didn't we? We did. We did. Okay, we did. Okay. All right. Okay, so moving on to number two, proposed additional conditions of the 2006 moratorium. As I said earlier, Chuck put together some information on it and some things that are here to discuss. To discuss, everybody should have been hand received a handout via Robin. Uh, excuse me, via Robin uh, in the email. I've reviewed it. I have been in agreement with some of it, and some of it I'm not in agreement with. It's up for the. Why don't we take them one by one? Of the things that um, hopefully we come to mutual agreements on on all of it. Okay, why don't we take them one by one? I think the first one, that development fee, we table for the fees. Get that right. based. You agree? What was the development fee? I'm sorry. I'm saying the item on the proposed additional conditions, why don't we table right now? It says development fee increase. Table that for the fees because it's covered there. Well, if we were talking about fees, I think we could talk about make things effective on July 1. Pardon me? We have the start of a new year. Well, I, well, why don't we wait to talk about the fees till the next, let's get through the conditions first. Okay, you wrote it, go ahead. Okay, the, the, sec, the second item line on them, um, as far as residential connection permits, I mean, we're at the design capacity for the facility now. Um, what I was looking at is, let's look at the town as a whole for residential growth. Um, Individual residential houses, I don't think is even an issue, you know, the small one, two, three family, five family developments. But if we're gonna be looking at say residential multifamily units, let's, I think we've got to look at uh, two areas in town first, uptown. One is Hot Park Street and the other is Howard Street. Uh, we have to, even though there's nothing presented yet, we have to keep them in the back of our mind that they are vacant lots and they should be filled. So it's not an eyesore of town. So what I was leading into with this is that the, we should not issue, we should, we should, be, we should put a, something in there saying that no residential connection permits will be in for projects consisting of more than 90 bedrooms or contribute in excess of 10,000 gallons a day into the wastewater system. Try to save our excess capacity for the wastewater, you know, existing wastewater customers, uh, potential upgrade, which is going to be a diffusion. We're going to have an issue there. And especially keep it, anything we have for commercial and, and resident, commercial and business entities to the town. So do you want to keep that or do you have, if, you have, uh, if you're not upset with that, John, or do you have con concerns with that one? I'm talking number two.
I guess the, what we have to clarify, the most important thing that I see coming out of this meeting tonight is, is when the effective dates are, because we've had developers come before the board and they've been delayed through no fault of their own. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't have a preference one way or the other, but I think if we did, if we change things mid road, it's, it's, it's at least unethical for us to do it. And it's probably, there's probably some legal ramifications if we make changes to development structure that we've already uh, expressed to the developer or developers. That's okay. why I was saying if we move to have an effective date of July 1 for anything that hadn't been pre presented to the board. I think right now we're, we're not doing it properly. I would, well, before this become effective, I would certainly hope that we'd get some legal counsel on it because again, I said it's at least unethical, if not illegal. Okay, I did take the opportunity to talk to Chris Kenny. And he said, as long as they have not submitted a written application. Now, talking to John, I guess there is no written applications. Correct. But when developers can have come in, it's up to the board to approve or disapprove. If we have not given any approval. We have said what we thought would be the fees. We have not You're given correct. we have not given them a formal set of fees, a written detail of fees. So I think what if we want to have further discussion legally, we can. But as I see it now, we have promised nothing because we have not approved anything. No. Again, I'm 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 in total disagreement with your interpretation. Okay, then I think what we need to do. As far as that, or the, and I think the whole hang up here is the dates. So let's I get Chris. I speak a little loud. I'm having a problem here. Okay, I think the whole disagreement then is focused around the effective dates of these moratoriums conditions. So what we could do is I suggest before we vote, F, let's go through them, see what we agree or disagree, then contact Chris Kenny and get a ruling from him. Okay. Okay. So with the wording, let's just talk wording, not effective dates. With the wording of line item two, the residential con connection with the moratorium. Now this moratorium is originally went effect in 2006. We haven't refused anybody. We're at the point, we're running out of room. So does anybody have a problem with item two? Now we discussed that, but we did not discuss that at the previous meeting. Well, personally, I'd, uh, I'd vote to do away away with the moratorium do away with it completely and leave it wide open yes because we've had we've done it uh since 2006 we've approved everybody so what's the difference now, here's the caveat to that we signed we were issued an epa order administrative order in 2006 that we put that moratorium in right. one of the conditions to appease them in 2006 along with the moratorium, uh, do a facility study, and... That's correct, Chuck. You cannot, you cannot do away with it because that was part of the administrative re response to the administrative order. I agree 100%. No, no, one, no one's saying that we can't modify it. That's what you're okay. trying to do. So Walter, what I'm, excuse me, Ronnie, what I'm hearing, yeah. you don't want to have any conditions. Well, yes, that, that would be uh, my, my uh, way of looking at it. So you're doing a complete flip on what you said back in February. When you agreed to the, when we talked about them, now you're saying no. Can you tell us, at least go on the record and tell us why you feel there should be no conditions? Well, I think there should be no conditions because we haven't, we've approved everybody since 2006. We approved everybody since 2006 when we were under an administrative order, and that administrative order is because we violated our flow 44% of the time in 2006. Since 2006, we were in violation of flow over close to 58% of the time. So we are worse technically than we were in 2004 with the new permit coming up. And you're saying do what you want to do away with conditions? Yes. If, if I may interject, the key point, the key point with the moratorium is that anybody with a development has to come before the board, and the board makes the decision on an individual basis. 
which includes the remediation effort that would be required. We've had project after project after project after 2005, and our flow has not grown in, uh, significantly. In fact, in 2005, and I'll keep repeating it, we were at three MGD. We've added numerous developments since then, and right now we're at, I think we're around 2.5 and change, under 2.6. So I think holding it, keeping the moratorium in place is a good tool. Modifications certainly could be looked at. Well, I, I think, think if, the we the major if we don't put down our thoughts of why, the, the reason I'm looking at that is we are going to eventually reject people. We've got to have a good reason that we accept or we don't accept. We've got to have a paper trail. And I, I, think if this I, I can give you a million and a half reasons. Huh? I can give you a million and a half reasons. That's the money that we use to fix the infrastructure. Without that, you're doomed. Well, I'm not, okay. So I'll tell you, if, then if we're doomed, we're, we're going to go back into the fees. I'm talking conditions now. Let's talk conditions. If we don't let future developers know that we have a capacity issue, they're going to keep coming before us, submit plans, and be rejected. How can you keep adding to what we don't have? You can keep adding if you keep taking out. If you have an 11 to 1 ratio that you're taking out, it certainly uh, doesn't take a rocket science to figure out which way to go. You're okay, getting a million and a half dollars to now. spend on remediation efforts and uh, another hundred fifty dollars to $200,000 to upgrade the, the pump station, then it seems to me that's the only way to go. It's the only way to keep viable. Like it I said, is. we've added development after development after development, and we haven't got sunk yet. Okay. But do you agree or disagree we are at design capacity? And we have more flow than we had back in 2007 when we were issued that report. We've had more what, Chuck? I'm sorry. We have a higher flow now than we no, did. No, we don't. We, no, we're we don't. at 2.5 now. Back then, we weren't. Over the back then, we were at 2005, we were at 3.0. We were back at, right now, John, we're at 2.5. The design capacity is 2.5. Our permit is 2.5. Now, if you want to go back to fees, if you want to jump over this and go to fees, if we needed money for fees, it's going to lead into it. Why didn't we up the fees? These fees have not gone up since 2004. I'm in total agreement up in the fees. I'm in total agreement. So we should have done it. If we would, if it's going to be a money. Would have, could have, Chuck. Let's, let's move forward and do it now. Okay. But you know what? how much money have we lost by not doing it? Well, that's. That's water under the bridge, Chuck. Now, if we, in, we increase the fees, <clears throat> Zero Pond Street goes with the- Zero, don't, oh, Zero Pond Street is not on the agenda. Don't bring a particular divide, uh, developer. Okay. Rate. The rates can't go up on them either. Do, you do, yes, they can. They, we did not vote on it, Walter. Uh, okay, I vote on the rate for uh, 7500 not 10000 We're not talking rates yet, Walter. We're talking about conditions on the moratorium. Yeah. So do you guys want to say we'll have no conditions on the moratorium, we'll leave it as is? I'm not, I'm not in agreement with that. Well, it's up I'm to, also it's not up to in agreement to change, so the, to change the... I'm also not in agreement to change it as the developers have been before us. If you're going to make changes, you have to have a date. Anything prior to the date, such as Zero Pond Street, would be excluded. You, bring, you can't bring up a developer or a project for this meeting. They're not on the agenda. So you can't be a specific, you cannot mention a specific project. Well, well then let's table this till the next meeting. When we're not going to get it solved before these developers come in. Right. That's what I, I understand Chuck's point. Chuck wanted to, to discuss this before the developers came in. That's why we're holding the meeting prior to the developers being here in person or being here via, via teleconference. This is something that should be ironed out so we're not keeping, keeping them hanging. It doesn't mean that their project is going forward, but we can set, we can certainly agree to make the modifications after a certain date. And I think that well, I'll use them uh, time and time again. Zero Pond Street should be excluded. 
They've been they've been before us. They were there in September, October, January. They couldn't make it, but in October we tabled that we tabled this discussion in October. So if we tabled in October, how can we feely come back and change change the rules of the ball game? And I understand what you're saying. They didn't fill out the application, but again, ethically. I don't think uh, it's it's the right thing to do for the town of Rock. Well, again, again, I will leave that up to that decision up to Chris Kenny. But and I also want to go on record is we promise them nothing. The vote has to be by the commissioners. The commissioners did not approve or disapprove any. The only one that has been approved since we've had these discussions is Concord Street. Can I ask a question? You got to say, we're on Zoom. You have to say your name and address, Mary. Mary Parsons, 754 Union Street. Can I ask a uh, question? Uh, hi, Mary. Yes, you, you, you may. Um, my question is, is, is did, did any developers, because some developers have a bad habit of coming and talking to you and thinking things are set. Did developers come in bring their plans for you to see so that they would get the fee structure Absolutely. that you're talking about. If they just did, it came and asked you a question, I don't see that being a problem in terms of upping the fees. Uh, they brought their plans. But otherwise, I agree with your date of July 1st has to be done. But any developer that just came and asked, you know, what's what and didn't bring their project um, plans, they have no right to hold you to the current fees. When they were here in October, we could have voted that night one way or the other. We chose not to. We chose to wait. So we waited, and now we're, it seems like we're going to backdoor them. So they, they, they would be exempt because they came before you formally. That's, that's, what, that's, where, that's where I'm coming from. Okay. But anyone what, else what, what that, other, you know. What do the other board members think about that? I, I agree with that. that. We're talking about an individual project, what we can. We're talking about an effective date. So we're going to say effective date then July 1. July 1, anything prior to that stays the same. Okay, but let's get on the record now that they were not approved for a permit. We know that. Correct? Correct. Not but. that they weren't right, but we tabled it. We, okay. they, they, agreed, they agreed to the conditions and they agreed to the fees. Okay, let's make that clear. They were mentioned to the fees, but they were not approved to go. They did not get But you permit. tabled them. That, that brings correct. in the, the other correct. issue. We're you tabled, tabled them. So you're, you're correct. you never came back to the table question. Okay. But anyone else, if it wasn't tabled, no, I would say they get the new fee structure. Agreed. Okay, I'll, I it will, happens. Agreed. Yeah, I, will, I will agree to that. I will agree to that. But let's I'll be very clear, all of us. No one was approved yet, with the exception of Concord no, Street. Nor was anybody denied. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. But now you do what you're saying question. is now what you're saying, John. If I'm understanding the other two members of the committee, that's who, who I'm addressing this to. Ronnie and Walter, you do not want to see additional additional conditions on the moratorium. You want to leave as is. A moratorium nope. that you put in place in 2007, no, 2000, yeah, 2007, and just wrote it and didn't even enforce it. That's what you I'm, want to do. I'd like to, do to saying that. I'd like to do away with the moratorium. Well, we can't. Oh, you, yeah, you can wait a minute. You can make a motion to do away with the moratorium. Then you're going to have to be the one to tell the DEA why. I wouldn't advise doing away with it because that was part of our response to EPA. Okay. That's my, opi my opinion. But may I ask a question, uh, Chuck, on number one? We're going to go back to fees? All right. Wait a minute. Are we? Uh, what I'm saying. Let's get so clear up the conditions. You're on, the zoning you're, conditions. on the, you're on the 2006 moratorium on page two. Okay. So you are. What about number? What about three and four? Point. What about three and four? Item three and four. You don't want to do them. Yeah. 
Maybe fees shouldn't be included that at that part. That should be separate. What I'm thinking of is what I'm saying with three is let the, whoever comes in as a developer, let them come in and don't expect the vote that night. Let us talk about it. Let us have time to think about it. Oh, I agree with that. Okay, so. Well, that's your chart. I'm looking at page two. Item three. Number one, development fee should be increased to $10,000 per unit. No, let's forget 5, the thousand. Let's forget the fees till the next section. Oh, we're walking about. through the set. Okay, you want to skip that. But yeah. where did you come up with number two, the 90 units? I just pulled that a, a number. That's what I want to okay. discuss. I didn't get any feedback. I was trying to get feedback from people. I received nothing, so I put a number in. You, you have actually says 90 bedrooms times 110. It's roughly your 10,000 gallons. That's how you got that. Yep, that's how I, I just put in numbers. So can we agree to bypass that for now? Pardon me? Can we agree to bypass that for now? Bypass? 90 units? Again, I'm just trying to- I don't agree. It. You want to take a vote, take a vote. A vote to bypass the uh, 90 unit. A second. Okay. Pardon me? Your favorite, Walter? I say no, but go ahead, Walter, your choice. Pardon? Chuck off. I, Ronnie says yes, I say no. I say yes for it, Ronnie says no. I thought Ronnie, Ronnie said yes. No, Ronnie said bypass. What? Oh, bypass the nine. Bypass, yep. okay, here it is. There'll be no residential connection permits issued for projects that will consist of more than 90 bedrooms or contribute in excess of 10,000 gallons a day to the wastewater system. Excess capacity will be reserved for wastewater system upgrade construction and new commercial business entities to town. I say leave it in. Ronnie. Is this starting July 1st? Yes, July 1st. Okay. You say yes or no? Uh, I'll say yes to that. Yep. Walter? Yes. Okay, so two is in. Item three. Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I kind of got lost with you guys there. Did you, what you just voted on or agreed to was to just bypass that discussion? No. Or actually? We're going to bypass line item one on the additional conditions. And we're going to talk about it in the fee section. Okay. And for number two, you're saying that you approve that condition of 90? Yes, we're going to add that into the moratorium. New projects after July 1st. Okay. Is that understood? Is that everyone's agreement? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, number three. And uh, I'll get into my rationale for this. Is all new applications presented to the Board of Commissioners for consideration of public discussion one month before we vote on it. The fees will be applicable at the day of the vote, not when they approach us. And we've got to come up with a written application. We have to start committing a paper trail because eventually we're going to reject somebody. And somebody's going to say, oh, you let so-and-so in. So I think we've got to come up with a written application and I think the way I'm presenting it here is the fact that once they present it to us, we have one month to get public input and then we vote on it. Makes sense. Make a motion to, yes, accept that. A motion to accept that. Walter, you'd accept that? Yes, I accept okay. that also. Three is there. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, number four, I'm saying before a new per a permit is issued, all new developments, whether residential, commercial, business, industrial, and I'll, I'll talk about municipal later, I think they have to start submitting a detailed estimated construction wastewater stream. What is there going to be their flow to the wastewater system during construction? And if they're going to have a wastewater flow, what's their profile in that flow? I think, I think that needs a little bit of work, Chuck, because if you're talking residential, commercial, industrial, you can't talk them all in the same breath. Residential is not going to have a profile, so that that's should true. be separate. No, that's true. Okay. And then, um, okay, say so we'll leave. And the certified laboratory that happens that would would happen during application time when if it was industrial, commercial, that's when we were interviewed the potential tenants and asked what they were, whether or not 
there was going to be any direct discharge, whether they'd be part of our industrial pretreatment program. So I think that that statement is uh, could be could be skipped the whole way, the whole the whole in its entirety. Okay, let me ask you a question. When when you have a commercial uh, development come in, do they issue or give you a formal waste stream a cert from a certified lab during construction? Do they give us a formal waste stream? Yeah, tell us what uh, a, a, an analysis, a profile of what is their waste stream, what is in it. So we know uh, what part of the acceptance would be whether or not there's going to be any direct discharge or again, whether there's going to be pretreatment before discharge. So I think it has to be looked at in, at an individual basis when the plans are submitted and reviewed. Okay, let's skip four and we'll review it. All in favor, skip them four. Hi. Hi. Oh. What was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> you want to skip line item four where yes. it's gone put up. It has really does not have anything to do with residential. Yep. I was looking to make sure that you now commercial or business waste streams come in and screw the system up any further or go over the volume that they should. So you want to table that? Well, the volume that they're permitted for would be would get that through water use records. Okay. So four is out. Okay, five. What I'm thinking of you is have now, to vote on that motion. No, just table that. No, we're just going to strike strike that from the. Okay, thank you. Number five. What I'm going to discussions by the board of commissioners on the applications that will be documented in writing for the record on each application, and we can accompany that with the estimated proposed fees for their use on inflow and infiltration work. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is say that if we reject a person, we've got to document our our rationale or reasons, our conversations. And I know it could be in minutes, but do we want to have a formal way, say on each, each, just a quick blurb on each applicant on why we rejected or why we accepted? Again, I'm thinking the paper trail legally. I agree with number five. Hmm. Well, I really don't know if uh, if it would be worth our while to do that. Well, I'm thinking if we ever get, we reject someone and we get called into court, we got to have a valid reason why. And we're going to have to have a paper trail because they're going to say, why did you let A have it and not me? We could have a paper trail say, well, here's the rationale why we accepted A. You're not going to be able to go by memory if it's five years down the road. Or if you're not on the board, I'm not on the board, Walter's not. We've got a paper trail for whoever sits on this board after us. I agree with the purpose. The purpose is to say what the estimated flow is going to be and what the fees associated for the development and for the remediation for I and I. Am I correct in assuming that, Chuck? Yep. I think but it's, I'm also think it's, a good it's going to be valid. Okay, yeah. That that that's basically that. Yes. Okay, that's individual. And I jumped myself. The reason I'm saying something for the file is we've got to have something in the file on why we agreed to did why we allowed or disallowed someone. And I think we have to do that at the time of the vote, so it's fresh in our minds. And whoever sits in our chairs afterwards. Very good. Okay, so five and six are okay. <coughs> Seven, John, I put in because I was going through some of the old SS and ES studies, and it seemed like there were problems with laterals coming out of homes. And I'm just, yeah, this, this is a, a can, like maybe give us an inroad. So, right now, if a homeowner has a problem with the lateral, we assume, am I correct to say, we assume the, the financial impact of that? Again, this one, this one needs some work, Chuck, because. The uh, recorded inspection of the laterals by a licensed drain layer, that, that doesn't happen. Well, I know it doesn't Inspection happen. by the sewer department of the lateral when it's installed. The drain layer does not in inspect his own work. So we'll take that out of there. It should be taken out, I should. And okay, then within no, 90 okay. days of the finished construction. Okay, I agree with the that. The anniversary dates. There's no, there's no video recording of, of any, uh, of any, uh, lateral connection like that. So I, I how do you how do you document 
when you, when a it's documented when when the superintendent goes out and does the inspection of the lateral that it conforms to all the rules and regulations of the soil use ordinance. Okay, is there any follow up on that? That's what I was trying to get to down the road, like ten years. What I'm trying to lead into is that maybe the homeowner should assume responsibility of maintaining their laterals. If the lateral is properly installed, then there should not be a problem. And I don't think you're going to get anybody uh, that's going to pay to have an inspection done after they paid to have it installed and paid in the town oversaw the oversee was the overseer of the uh, installation. Okay, if we go back 10 years again, and we find out, say one of these SS and ES studies finds a problem with a lateral coming from the home. Laterals are the responsibility of the homeowner. So there is a mechanism in place that if they, that say this SS and ES study comes up, finds a problem with ABC, number 10 ABC Street. Right. Number 10 is responsible to repair that lateral. If there's a problem with the lateral, the, the homeowner is responsible for the TV work to to uh, identify what the problem is. There's no responsibility for the town. Okay, seven's out, I agree to that. Okay, so in summary, we'll add in, we scratched one, we're gonna add in two, three, five, and six to the existing moratorium. So you could just recap those numbers again, Chuck. Approve two and three. We take we scratched, we tabled one for later. We right. put two, three, five, and six. Correct. Okay. I'll add them into the moratorium and have something to sign for the next meeting. Do you want to get into the new fee structure now? It's a new fee structure. Um, okay. So in essence, what Chuck is proposing on the sewer tie-in connection permit fees, these are for the permit fees only. They're actually doubling, going from $50 to $100, 100 to 200 and so forth. Sounds very reasonable. What I want to emphasize is we have not, in a, for the residents or whoever's listening, we have not gone up in fees since 2004. That's that is, correct. That is our fault. And that, again, that should be effective July 1st. I'll agree to that. Okay, that's for only those two fees, correct? No, no, no. Go right down the list, Ronnie. Yep. Yeah. The sewer tie ins from single family to 100. And it's 100 for each. Right. I tried to leave commercial, business, and industrial alone. We've got to do something to attract more business. We have to. So I didn't want to mess with them. I went up just what I go up to on two hundred fifty dollars on those. Okay, so we're all set with the sewer connection permit fees, correct for residential? Yep. yep. Okay, so John. Sewer development fees. You're going to put those. Can I can I say something? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Just the fact that we have a sewer treatment plant is an attraction for a business, no matter what the fee scale is. How many towns around here have sewer treatment plants? Oh, we're very fortunate. Zero. That's a great area. I, 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 I agree with you completely, but we still have to go up in their fees something. We can't leave them. We, we, we need to really aggressively, aggressively go after this I and I. So, so sewer development fees, uh, that's a tricky thing. Robin has done some research on it, but the numbers are all over the place. So you are requesting a 100% increase from $5,000 per unit to $10,000 per unit. Does anybody have any? Originally, originally, I said 75. You chimed in in February or March and said you'd- I think, I think 75 is reasonable. All right. I agree with that too. Walter? I, I agree. We don't want to shoot up- per unit. Court. $7,500 per, per unit. I may. Now, I think the $10,000 fee, what we're looking at the bulk of our development is residential homes. I mean, you start packing in these apartment buildings, it, it's going to be a problem. There's a lot of fees here. If they really want to put in an apartment building, I don't think you're going to see a three family. $30,000 to put in a three family home is not that big a deal, one time cost, when you look at the scheme of things. 
What you're getting hung up on is the bigger developments. And quite honestly, I don't think we want the big development projects, the housing, the multi-unit apartments. But again, that's not up to me. That's my my choice, my vote. I mean, you it's a burden. It's not just a burden on the sewer department. It's a burden on the police. It's a burden on the fire. And what are they, what, okay, we're getting off on a tangent here. So that's what I was going after, the large apartment buildings. That's, that's where I was coming from. And if we're gonna look at how building large apartment buildings, you guys gotta start thinking outside the box and look at uptown. We don't want vacancies uptown. You gotta fill that Park Street, that's gonna be a large one. You're gonna fill Howard Street. I'm looking at probably 50 units there. If, and there's no project on the book yet for those, but the potential is there. Well, getting back to what you said earlier in the meeting, you were talking about uh, Park Street. Park Street, if you gave them those numbers, they're, they're, they're not gonna develop it. If we gave them 10,000. That's if we come somewhere in the middle at 7,500, I well, think you, everyone they, could they, agree they, on they, that. We have to grandfather them back in. So they, okay, so they don't, they're not effective. No, no. They're, they're not great. They're not grandfathered. You just said they were. We're talking about these fees aren't affected. I said there was. I said there was discussion. They were never before the board. Then I say leave it at ten. If you're going to do it, then that's up to you. It's up to the commissioners. All right, because here's my argument. If we're going to be, if they're going to want to put in a large, burdensome apartment building anywhere in town, it's going to be a burden on our public safety units too. It's going to be a burden on our water, all our infrastructure. It's going to create traffic. You know what? They want to play. They should be able to pay. Rockland needs the money for that I and I work. That I and I needs to be addressed. It's going to be the only way we're going to be able to captivate or slow down our flow before construction on a new facility. And remember, that new facility is 10 years out. So we're going to be dealing with this for the next 10 years. So if we're going to do it, let's get the dollar that we can put to the I and I work. But we can always raise our rates. We it, didn't since 2004, so let's do it right now. And if we want to raise them again, we raise them. But on the flip side, we can lower them. I say let's make a statement right now. Here's our rates. And if they want to come back, we're getting a lot of flack. All right, you know what? Let's consider lowering them. So you're saying we can lower them for a developer if they want to come in? No, I'm saying we can put it up for a vote if we want to. If we want to lower it. If we want to lower, not, it has to change the moratorium or change the whole fee structure. I'm saying, let's change this right now. Let's get the fees established. Say, here's what it is. If they don't like the 10,000, they're not going to come, are they? Yeah, then, then we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Why are we shooting ourselves in the foot? Where are we? Why? They, they, the they might agree. The ones we're shooting ourselves in the foot, Ronnie, are the ones that are 50 units or more. Where in God's name are we going to put 50 units? Park Street and Howard like, Street. Like you said, Park and Howard. All right. So if they want to put in, they know what the fees are. And if they don't want to pay the fee, then we'd lose our business and the money. Then you know what? We should have progressively gone up. So this is, you're talking how many years? 16 years. What, is, what, is, what hasn't gone up 50% in 16 years? How about what? your salaries, wages, raw materials? Has raw materials more than doubled since 2004? What are some of the surrounding towns uh, getting? They're, they're all over the place. And again, mm -hmm. Mary made the point earlier, they don't have a sore. That's they, right. they don't have a facility that they're treating wastewater. They don't have a, a, they don't have a plant. So fees are different. Although you can look at Whitman. Whitman is $25,000 per connection. That's on the high end. Uh. Other places that uh, Robin canvassed, for $2,500. So the 5,000 was somewhere in the middle. I think my own opinion that we should go in the middle again between five and 10,000 and that's a marked, marked increase, increasing by to 7,500. And I'd stick with the 10, we can use the money. I agree, 7,500. Again, remember this repair work is 10 years out before we're going to be saying it. But we can always raise the rates again. Yeah. I'd rather go after that I and I right now. Why waste three years to go up and, and, and say, okay, you know what, we gotta go out and go after it. 
We know where it is. Let, let's go after it right now. Make a motion. You may not get the big fish if, the, if you price yourself out. Yeah, you don't want to price yourself out of business. Okay, then tell me where, what, what big fish are we pricing out? Residential, all we're, we're talking is residential. Yep, I lost everybody here. Residential per unit. Right. That's not a single family home. Right. So what, what's the average developer? 40 units, 40 houses, where are they gonna go? Again, it's up to the board to make, make, a, well, make a motion. I'm, it's up to I'm the still board sick to accept with, it. I'm still sick with the motion to raise it to 7,500. I second it. I disagree. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, the motion carries to increase the fees from $5,000 per unit to $7,500 per unit. I'll change that, publish it out. And then there was a note, if permitted, over 150 units would be charged $7,500. That's kind of going against what that's you were gone, thinking. That's gone right now because I was going to say anything over like 150 units instead of 10,000. You're encouraging them then to go from 10 to 7,500. Huh? Say that again, John. I think the note should just be scratched. Okay, it is. Okay, how about the um, the fee instead of ten dollars a gallon a day to twenty gallons a day? Again, that fee was established in two thousand four. I don't think. What, $10. what is that one in reference to, Chuck? On the note at the bottom: all new applicants will pay a one. You on, know, bus on businesses, is that for commercial? No, the. Uh, the uh, when we assess the bedrooms in that, it's instead of ten dollars, twenty dollars. That again has been in place since two thousand four. I don't think that's a ridiculous. what page and number are you referencing? I'm look, looking at Corner. the bottom bottom note in bold on page four. You know how we calculate uh, ten dollars a gallon per bedroom, the hundred and ten. Are we talking on the remediation check? Yes. Instead of ten dollars, we make it twenty dollars. That's, That's a reasonable, very reasonable increase. Yeah. Okay, make a motion for that. To accept. Ronnie. Yes. I'm in favor. I'm in small favor. Aye. 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 Okay, on page five, uh, these are the business minimums that were in there. Okay, so now we're on <clears throat> minimum, not title, <clears throat> not subject to title five. Right. This is for the business use of you, what used to be, um, what was the number before? $8,000, you're increasing $8, it to 10,000? $8,000. I went from 8,000 to 10,000. Those all seem reasonable. Yeah. yeah, make a motion for the increase to 10. I'll second. I'll do. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's it for the fees. And again, all these fee increases are effective July 1st. Mm -hmm. The next item I see is the, uh, the 20 SSENS study. Um, John, I didn't know where you were on that. I saw the-, the Excuse the me, Chuck. Okay, so, so I emailed um, correspondence from AECOM to all the commissioners this afternoon. Sorry you got it so late, but that's when I sent it. So what it, what it is, the correspondence is a letter from AECOM describing what they're gonna do there's an attachment A that gives pipe size in where they're going to be. There's a attachment B, services of the engineer. And the attachment C is a um, map of the area that they're going to do. Again, no money has been appropriated for this yet. This money is for town meeting in June.
but Chuck asked to see it. So I have, I've actually been working on this since November. So you, you should, each of you have it. I, I would suggest at the next meeting, then you could vote to approve it or disapprove it. What I was getting at, John, I didn't know if you had a scope of work out there, if that letter was the scope of work. Um, I'm sorry, Chuck, I didn't hear that. I didn't know if you had a, a scope of work or something that had to be followed up on. Oh, there is a scope of work. If it, it's, all, it's all in there. Okay. Um, so you get that. How many bids were in on that? Or did you just go back to them? On this one, it's an under an engineering bid. I don't have to put that out to public bid. The engineering firm is going to hire the subcontractors and they will get the best price that we could get for the subcontractor that does the work. Okay. That's for that one. Uh, I had asked John. Hey. Uh, I'd asked John for a, a milestone completion on the I and I because the only one I saw was uh, from 2008 to 13. I didn't know if you had another one, John, a milestone chart from the study that was done in 2013. Are you talking number five? Yeah. Each year I have to submit an INI summary report right. to EPA and DEP, which has been followed diligently. And the five-year plan that we had to submit to them back in 07 has been followed diligently. So everything that was in those in that response plan has been done. Okay. Over and above that, we're only mandated to do it for five years. We've continued with our efforts to reduce INI uh, because it's it's in our permit that you do it. And I continue to give them INI summary report. No, I'm not telling you that. The only thing I was getting at, is there any other milestone charts that we have to keep on top of when you're no. gone? I gotcha. Now, anything that has been addressed has been mentioned, has been addressed. Okay, so there is some documentation that we'll be able to follow. Didn't hear it? Yeah, there'll be some documentation or some. Uh, the documentation has been in my INI reports that have been submitted annually. Okay. Yeah, we did the comprehensive studies. That's five, that's six. Okay, drain layers, I guess. Drain layer. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, Robin. Okay, um, so the drain layer application, I have two of them. The first one is for MJM Construction Corporation, Inc. They have not previously been licensed in Rockland, but they did provide all of the documentation and pay the fees. John, have you seen the documentation? Who was the company again? I'm sorry. MJM. Oh, yes, yes, I reviewed it. They wanted to do the work up at Wendy's. Okay, make a motion to accept MGM. Second. Aye. Aye. Thank you. And then the other and the last is for sandstone construction. They've been previously licensed in the town and they were just renewing their application and they provided all of the requested documentation. And right. They completed a job at 183 or 181 Liberty Street last year, did a fine job. Okay, make a motion to accept the application. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Superintendent's position. In light of it, I think we've got to get an ad out. Hello? At the next yeah. one, it's the commissioner's letter. Let me see where. Are we? Review commissioner's letter to the town report. Oh, okay, yeah. What I when John read it to me, I didn't have a, any problem with it. I didn't know if Walter or Ronnie saw it. And if he wanted to read it to him or no, no, I just because we I, didn't I vote were... on it, we didn't see it, so I didn't know if you wanted to read it to him or actually I don't want to really read the three pages of it. Okay, I'm sure it's pretty comprehensive. <laughs> But what it is, it's a, it's a report that I wrote as the superintendent acting on behalf of the sewer commissioners. I think that was Chuck's point of contention. Maybe I should have reviewed it. 
with you before I submitted it, but it's been my past practice for the last 15 years to write it and submit it. And this, this year in particular, my being out on disability, I had not had the opportunity to share it with you. No, I didn't have a problem with it. I just thought the other guy should see it. Or the name's on it, so. Yeah, we'll, we'll get the opportunity. Okay, superintendent's position then. So the next, is everyone good with that? Yep. Yes. Well, the next agenda item is the superintendent's position. Again, in these times, it makes things very difficult because of trying to advertise for a position, trying to get applicants in. It's just not the right time to do it. Um, time is of the essence. I've had discussions with HR. I've had discussions with other people in the town hall. And I would make a suggestion that you have an interim superintendent and Dave Taylor. Okay, I make a motion to have an interim superintendent. As Dave of July, as as of July 1st. July 1st, correct. I'll second mm -hmm. that. favor? Aye. Aye. I wanted the interim, John. That's when we talk to town council, that has to be specified, Chuck. It has to be specified oh, for the duration. It has to be specified for the number of hours worked and what the salary would be. Uh, John okay, Crystal was involved with it. With the discussion, the SSES night work and all that other stuff. I'm sorry. He will be covering the SSES night work and everything. Yes, exactly. Right. Oh, so, that, that's a big commitment in itself. The uh, the SSSES SSES once it's approved, um, we hope to start that in October during high flow, or the what the high flow uh, high groundwater. You, you can't do that in a drought season, so that would be October. So but they've been filling in that, admirably so. in my absence, uh, along with Suez, but Dave has responded to a lot of sewer backups. In fact, he did one today on Linden Street. He handled it. It also entailed the IPP program, doing the grease trap inspection, visiting uh, industrial facilities, and the day-to-day -day operations to support Robin and Suez. Can what? I ask a question? As far as going out and advertising for a full-time position. I'm sorry. I think we should still advertise and go out to bid for a full-time position because I think what this is going to lead to, and here is what I would, I would hope to do, was I think we've got to look at the position number one as, you know, is it required full-time or can it be merged with like a DPW? The other thing is, if we, I'm afraid that if we get in and merge it to a DPW, that's going to take away some of the voters' power. But if we also may want to look long term, we go to a design build operate. Rockland's got to get out of the environmental liability business. Um, it's not going to be easier. It's not going to be cheaper. If we go with design build operate, they assume all the liability for the environmental bullshit. Oop, can't say that word on this. All the environmental nonsense, permitting, uh, non compliances, stuff of net that nature. My fear is if we put a person in, they'll either gear it to a full-time position, they're not gonna to wanna to give it up. But so I say we advertise out or see, we keep it interim only till this report is come in. Well, again, to your point, I gave HR the, the job description that you and I both worked on. They have that, she's formatting it. So that's not on the back, that's, that's not uh, obsolete. But again, in this time, this time, time frame that we're in now, was impossible to solicit to get qualified candidates. Well, I think if we add, add put an advertisement out, it's going to take three months anyway to go through the screening and finding. I say we advertise now. So I, I guess maybe you guys should come up with a time, um, a window of how long the interim would be. I say no more than six months. I say we start looking out for a superintendent's position, see what type of candidate is out there now, start talking to him. That, that, that makes perfect sense. So I'm gonna make a motion that we draft an ad can, for a superintendent. Can I 
make a statement here. Is this Dave Taylor, the highway superintendent, or is this a different person? No, it's, he's the highway superintendent. Okay, what salary is he going to take? Because he can't have both It all depends salaries. on the hours, as we discussed with John Clifford. It depends on the hours that it comes to the superintendent's uh, line item. Certainly not, he's certainly not going to get the superintendent's pay. He's going to well, get a, a, a small portion of it. Well, to be uh, to be able to respond twenty four seven in the, in the event of emergency, so he will be he will be compensated, but certainly not at the rate of a full time superintendent. Well, you know that leads to a catch twenty two. Technically, the superintendent yeah. reports to the board of sewer commissioners. In his temporary capacity, who is he going to report to? It it, it reports to to the board of sewer commissioners as in his role as interim superintendent. So his hours will be approved and we will see his hours in his timesheet, if you will, on a monthly basis. The hours will have to be before any before anything is signed or anything like that or approved by town council, the hours will be established in the salary. This is just food for thought for the next meeting that could be discussed, but I wanted to get the ball moving. Okay, I say we table the discussion on the interim until the next meeting. I don't think you. I don't think you can afford to table it. I think you can afford to. We got here another month. You can afford to. You can uh, make the dot the i's and cross the t's at the next meeting. No, you're here another month. I say we table it so we have time to think about it for the month. But in the meantime, we draft an ad to see what kind of response we get. But I say we vote now on Dave Taylor for the interim for six months. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Disagree. All right, two to one. Dave Taylor is the interim superintendent. But uh, caveat to that, it's to be noted that he reports to the sewer commission in his- I'm, I'm sorry, Chuck. His, in his capacity as acting superintendent, he reports to the sewer commission, not town hall. Correct. Okay. You guys hear that? You understand that? Agreed, yes. Yep, agreed. I think Dave Taylor should be at the next meeting. Do, I have a, do you guys agree or disagree? Oh, I agree if he wants to be there. Yes. Yeah. Yep. He should be there. Why would you want to be if he's going to do the job? He might right. as well be there. Yep. Yeah. All right, is Rick there, or is it Rick and Ed, or is it just Ed? Uh, I'm here, John. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Okay. Well, is, is we're going, are we going to ask um, Dave to be at the next meeting? I'm sorry, I mean, you like I'm to ask Dave to attend the next room. meeting? So we have Dave Taylor at the next meeting. Quite yeah, we can ask him. You seconding it? I'm sure it'd be acceptable to come into the next meeting. Is that the point? Is that what you just said, Chuck? Yeah, let's, I'd like to make a motion. Yeah. Oh, we ask him to appear. Well, we have to ask him first. Pardon me? He's going to be available and when, when the next meeting is. Uh, yeah, we can't, we, we can't force him to be there. I'm Could sure that he'll, I'm sure that he'll come. Yeah. I'm sure he'd be glad to show up. Well, Walter, you call the next meeting. That would uh, certainly be an agenda item for the next meeting. Yeah. If that Rick, I guess you're up. <clears throat> hey, sounds good. Um, What's that? Let's see some back noise. All right. Um, I'll I'll start. Um, obviously, it's been a while. Listen since... loud, if you would, Rick, please. Sure. Uh, obviously, it's been a while since we've had a, a formal meeting. But unfortunately, these days, this type of meetings that we have to have. Um, Suez update, I'll give that for us. Um, as you know, we were for a while there for I think a period of eight weeks, we were doing kind of like split shifts to, to protect the guys. We were doing four on, four off, which, you know, it worked It worked well to keep the guys safe from getting any of the uh, coronavirus. But it got to a point where uh, back on the 18th, we went back to full time uh, the shifts that we normally, <coughs> we just couldn't complete some of the job tasks that we had uh, with just four on a staff. 
So speaking a little bit about the coronavirus Suez policy, um, we're practicing down here at the plant, like John said earlier, we pretty much got the place uh, bottled out. Uh, really, it's difficult to get in here unless you make an appointment. But we're here at the staff, we're practicing six feet social distancing. Um, all employees are wearing masks when they when this can't be done. We do we're doing daily temperature checks on employees and visitors, and you know we still have to have visitors. We still have to do some uh, maintenance and annual things and monthly things. So we're we're keeping a, a up on that we're doing wiping down of all surfaces doorknobs screens things like that again we're trying to protect we're trying to protect the staff so that we as the O&M contractor can obviously uh, fulfill our contract agreements with the town of Rockland um, some of the other things that since we haven't talked high flow events um, we really haven't had any that we've had to implement but we have had some high flow I mean I was listening to you Chuck um, back in April our daily average flow was 4.3 million gallons uh, per day. But with that being said, we also had seven inches of rain. And it becomes a balancing act as everyone on this call knows. Um, but we're fortunate we do have some of the offline tanks that we can uh, fit approximately 1 million gallons in there, in the tanks. Uh, but unfortunately with, with the high flows, there comes violations, not only with the, with the flows, it, we had a bioassay uh, exceedance uh, back in April, and it was really, it was due to the, uh, the flow. I mean, you just don't have the detention time at this facility uh, when your flow's are that high. And, you know, I and I, we've been talking about it for years, like Chuck said, you know, and, you know, we are, we, we're dealing with it. We, we do what we have to do um, as far as, you know, Ba balancing balancing the flow that's coming in here and you know I think my guys and everyone here does a great job when the flow comes down we're not the only town only city that deals with I and I um, unfortunately when it rains it, it affects us here in Rockland a lot more um, I'm very glad to see that the right Pierce uh, contract is moving forward uh, like, like again like Chuck says it's been 35 years since we've had a major upgrade down here so the the first step is small step, but it's the assessment. And then eventually we'll eventually get to a, and like you said, a probably over 10 year period to a design and a design and build of this, um, of a newer facility. Cause I mean, we, we need it. Well, I, I was in discussions with the EPA recently and they had told me, uh, they got a new John, they got a new permit writer now. Um, his last name is Corb too. I don't know, I forgot his first name, I think it's Mike. And I, I don't know where they're at with the whole process, but he kind of told me uh, about a month ago that had it not been for the COVID-19 that we would have probably seen a, a new NPA <coughs> permit in um, the fall. He's now, he's now saying that uh, the town of Rockland should see this draft permit in 2021. Again, I think we, they've been saying this for the past nine years. So yeah. I, guess, I guess we just gotta wait and see. But it seemed like he said we were up, we were next on the agenda. We were at the top three. Now, again, I, th I think a lot of the timing here with Wright Pierce, I think that could benefit us because, you know, in talking to them I, I, about the draft permit, I mean, I think we, that would be great if we could see the draft permit before Wright Pierce finishes the plant assessment because then we'd know exactly, you know, what we need this permit to meet what, you know, we would be talking about total phosphorus, low numbers, but we don't know, we really don't know what other items are gonna be on this, uh, on the new permit. Now that draft permit, once a draft is issued, that is when it goes off a of public comment, correct? Correct. That's, when, so that's you, when the North River Watershed Association will see it. That's when they'll start, that's when they'll be out um, at that very tentatively. Um, Let's see what else we got on the uh, the flows has been been the big issue down here. Um, some of the other things we've been and I know we're not going to bring up uh, bringing up zero but Oak Country Way we we've I've talked to John and we that station is such dire need of a major upgrade and we've talked about it in the past in some of our meetings we had to table the generator because we just didn't have the money. So we've got an old beat up generator out there that's working, but how long, I, I you know, I can't, I can't answer that question. But I thought we had, I thought we had $30,000. Uh, 
that was going to go to that generator. We did, but then we had other expenditures that John and I discussed that just, it just ate the money up. We didn't have enough. One of them we had to buy a pump in an emergency situation. Yep. That cost, that cost us $10,000 right there. So in these emergency situations, like with, with there, let's take that, the pump station, the town doesn't have a fund we can access. Didn't hear the comment. If the if the, the 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 pump station went down and we didn't have the funding, wouldn't couldn't the town take over? Don't they have an emergency <clears throat> fund? Now we have, depending on what the cost was, if it was astronomical, absolutely, then they'd have to get bond money. Thirty thousand dollars is an easy. It was astro an astronomical situation, but otherwise we have maybe a little bit of cushion in our budget that we could take from someplace else if we had an emergency, a dire emergency. Sometimes you have to do emergency procurement. You worry you. you you do the procurement and then you worry about it afterwards. Well, we don't have the 30,000. Why don't we just get the generator and worry about a lighter and put, in, put it in for the town? We we're actually hoping that we would have had that $200,000 to work with by now. <clears throat> we, Rick and I and Ed met, met over the phone last week to discuss the, just, just that. And um, we, don't, we don't have the 30,000, but once the new budget is approved, we'll have more in R&M that we might take it from there if we don't have another source. Right. Well, like John said, I mean, I've been running, Ed and I have been doing our due diligence and getting prices for that pump station. And, they, and unfortunately, they're coming even higher than we thought. And I, I probably, we're probably talking now about a quarter of a million dollars, you know, 250,000 to get that station. And, and, that's, and that's basically a brand new station. You have new pumps, new railing system, new controllers, you know, new generator, you know, but it would be done. And again, One of the articles work. for approval at this May's town meeting is also a review of all the pump stations, the $60,000 article that we put in. That's correct. But that's a study. That's not going to be for repair. Right. Um, One thing, Rick, while, you, while you're speaking, Absolutely. let's talk about the digester boiler. Okay. Rick and Ed have done a lot of work soliciting quotes for the digester boiler. In fact, uh, time has slipped by, so prices have changed, but they've actually gone to Brown and Caldwell, who had a lot of information, Hallam ICS, Wilkinson Boiler, and a cast of others. We, we had a telephone conference again last week on this, and we decided to go with, and they, each, each one of the firms had three options, going ranging from 31000 Dollars on the low end to seventy-four thousand dollars for Brown and Caldwell, who we thought would be cheaper. We're actually going to go with Hallam, Hallam ICS, for a price of thirty-eight thousand and fifty dollars. It's going to give us the best options that we, after reviewing what we're going to get for our money, we decided to go to with Hallam. So actually, if if the board would vote to award the contract for the di the digester boiler to Hallam. For thirty-eight thousand and fifty dollars, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the bid from Hallam. I'll for thirty-eight thousand. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Again, they put a lot of hard work into this, and, the, and as Chuck said earlier, the prices don't go down. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Rick, but I oh, want to get that no, in before I, I actually, forgot it. No, that was that was going to be the last thing because I know I have Ed on the call and I know Ed's Ed's done a lot of a uh, lot of work on that personally on that digestive boiler engineering quote, and um, that's all I have, gentlemen. Um, that's that's about okay. it. Like I so said, before uh, in closing, I would like to thank the Suez staff again, and I want to give uh, a big shout out to Robin for pulling us through this in this uh, in these dire times. It's been a lot of emotional stress on people to be working in there. Uh, Robin's done an exceptional job teaming up with the Suez people as far as doing due, doing due diligence and uh, cleaning the facility a couple of times a day. I can't say, I can't say enough about them. So thank you. Thank you, thank you John. All right, thank you, Robin. Thank you, thank Robin. You. I'd, I'd also like to thank Dave Murphy from, from WRPS and Gino Jingus, the IT director for making this possible. I know it's new to, it's brand new to me, 
um, but I think we got through it. And Good. Robin, for your help in facilitating it. Thank All you. right. Thank you, Gino that, and Dave. Have a nice evening. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope everybody stays safe out there, and I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Walter, no plan, Walter, no plans for another meeting? Pardon? No plans for another meeting. Well, you have to look at the calendar, maybe. Huh? Uh, what's the for? You want to meet in June, or you are you want to blow it off? Should probably do the last meet last week in June. June. Yeah, I'm in favor of that. June 25th is the Thursday. What? Is June June 25th is the last Thursday in June. Okay, we, we can set it up for that, I guess. That's fine. Just an update. I just got a uh, an update from Dave Dave Taylor. We had that backup on Linden Street. It was all set on Linden Street, so. Oh, he good. Zoom in the good. position before he's in it. All right, everybody, stay safe out there. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All, all right, right. Care, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Mary. Good night. You're welcome.